Hey cooks, today we're making spaghetti a la carbonara. We're going to be doing that in the Molto by Cooking Pal. So we unboxed this the other day. This is a cooking food processor that runs off a tablet. And we're gonna do one of the guided recipes in here. Um, it is a spaghetti that has a creamy, creamy bacony sauce, but there's actually no milk or cream in it. The sauce is made from emulsified eggs. So join me, let's make spaghetti a la carbonara. So we talked about this Malto by Cooking Pal last week. It is a multifunction food processor cooker that you can steam, you can make soup, you can make stews. We are making pasta, right? And it's actually controlled by this tablet that has a full on recipe uh, library in it and it guides you through and it controls the cooker. So when it tells you to put an ingredient in here, you hit start, it starts this and it, it cooks it based on the time in the recipe. So. It's a lot of fun to use. These have become really popular, so we're gonna do our first cook with this. If you would like to take a look at this Malto, I'll put a link down in the description um, so you can sort of take a look at his features and uh, see how cool it is, right? So let me get my ingredients and let's start cooking. Okay, so when you first uh, fire up the Cooking Pals, hub it comes to this screen we're going to be doing a guided cook today and the screen is touch screen so it's going to give you a lot of recipes you can search for the recipe that you like um, i put this in my favorites so i'm going to go to favorites we're going to be doing spaghetti carbonara so we have parmesan shallots bacon olive oil hot water salt spaghetti egg and pepper and you just hit let's start and you can tear all your ingredients I've already done that um, so we would be ready to cook so we're gonna go next um, we will chop the bacon into lardons which is like bacon bits and we're gonna chop the Parmesan I um, shredded it okay so we're going to add the shallots to the mixing bowl so we're gonna go ahead and remove the bowl. I'm gonna throw in the shallots. We're gonna put the lid back on. And we're gonna go ahead and start, and it's gonna chop. Whoa! <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and remove the bowl. I mean the lid. We're gonna go next. We're gonna add the bacon and the olive oil to the bowl. We're gonna go ahead and put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And we have some bacon. So this bacon is peppered bacon and carbonara a lot of times has pepper in it. So I got pepper with ba uh, bacon with pepper. Bacon isn't necessarily the traditional carbonara meat. You might use a cut that comes from the jowl of a pig, or you might use um, pancetta. We live in a very small town and you can't get that, so we're using bacon. And the instruction for this recipe calls for bacon. And we'll put the lid on. And we're gonna cook this. So there's a lot of disagreement about whether the um, bacon on carbonara should be crispy or soft. It is up to your preference. This one cycle tends to cook it on the soft side. We like it on the crispy side. So I'm gonna run it through more than one cycle so we'll get the level of crispiness that we want. You can do that based on your own preference. So um, this is gonna cook. Okay, as you can see, it came to an end, it's done. We're going to take the lid off. And this is what I mean by it's not really crispy enough. Um, the bacon is still a little soft. Some people eat carbonara with the bacon that's soft. 
Um, I wanted a little crispier. This is the cook's prerogative. It's your carbonara. You can make it however you want, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid back on. We're going to put this on and I'm gonna run another cycle. Okay, the bacon's done, so we need to get it out of the bowl. So the bacon is done, and we're going to put it into a little bowl. We're gonna drain it a little bit, and we're gonna put this in this little bowl. So like I said, you can cook it to your desired crispiness. I didn't get it super crispy. I could have ran it through it again. Um, So the instructions say for us to rinse the bowl out, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So the next step we have is to put water in for the pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we need 68 ounces. So I'm gonna put on the scale and it's gonna tell us how much water to put in. Put the lid back on and we need to heat the water. So we're gonna go ahead and say start. It's gonna take just a few minutes to heat the water. Okay, so the water's hot. Our next step is to put in the spaghetti. So we're gonna take the lid off. The instructions are to, to um, Snap the spaghetti in half and put it into the little strainer so it's easier to lift out. Um, usually I don't break the spaghetti in half, but this is what it calls for. So this is how I'm gonna do it. If you don't wanna do that, just put it straight in there, but this is a lot easier to strain it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. I'm gonna put the lid back on. We're gonna hit start. We'll be back when this is done cooking. Okay, so the pasta just finished. We're gonna go ahead and take the lid off. Woo! It's definitely hot. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and strain our spaghetti out here. And we're going to, woo! Put it in the pot here. Woo! Okay. So there's, your pasta won't totally be done because it's gonna cook a little bit more. So we removed that from the simmering basket and drained it. So we're going to reserve a little bit of the cooking liquid and you do this with carbonara because you're gonna loosen the sauce with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little ladling here. I don't know how much, it doesn't matter. Take out. You're not gonna use that much, but I'm just gonna reserve about a cup or so. And let me dump this water. Okay, so we have all that out. So now, while the pasta is still hot, we have got all that drained and we reserved our liquid. We're gonna take our pasta and we're gonna put it back into the malto. Yay. We're gonna put our bacon and shallot mixture into the malto. Yum. <laughs> so I have two eggs here. We're just going to beat the eggs really quick. And I also have some grated Parmesan. This is five and a half ounces. So we're gonna add the egg and the cheese into the cooker. This is gonna emulsify and make our sauce. I'm gonna put the vast majority of this cheese in here. 
Well, actually, I have a little extra, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all that cheese in here. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with a little bit of our reserved pasta water. I'm just gonna put maybe that much in there. We're gonna put a little fresh cracked black pepper in here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put our lid back on. And we're gonna hit start. Okay, so we have some carbonara. <laughs> um, wow. It looks beautiful. So let's see. Wow. That emulsified. Amazing. Make sure you put a little bit of the pasta water in there. But look at how creamy. look at how nice and creamy that looks. There's no cream in this. No. There's no well, there's cheese. But there's no cream. It emulsified an egg perfectly. Yeah. With all that cheese too. Wow. It looks amazing. So look at how beautiful that is. That is, it, it's perfect. So I'm not going to uh, say that I completely know how to plate perfect pasta because it should be in some kind of mound, but I don't know really how to do that, so. Obviously, <laughs> it, it's going to taste the same, though. <laughs> Don't laugh, right? And I'm going to take some Parmesan and... give him a nice coating of that. And it looks like... It's dinner time for Eric. Okay, boo, try out your carbonara here. Yum, yum. It's creamy, huh? There's no, there's no dairy. Oh, there's dairy, but there's no. Oh, like you didn't put milk or. No cream. cream. It's just emulsified egg. with the cheese and the egg and the Delicious. pasta water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yum, yum. Boo. So the malto did a great job. Um, it emulsified it. It was nice and creamy. You really need to get that pasta water in there to loosen it up. Um, it was fun to make. Yeah, it's difficult for me, someone who's gone from pan to try to this. My, re my natural desire is I like the, you know, the ability for me to be able to re react when it's in a pan. I think these machines are great for someone who would like to explore outside what they normally cook. Um, the guided recipes give you a lot of different options and you will end up cooking things that you don't normally cook. Um, I can't say 100% that, oh, this is like, a perfectly traditional version of this, but I think it did a great job. And the substitution for the bacon um, worked for me because I live in an area where I can't get those other kinds of um, meat. So the bacon worked amazing. Um, I would say that a lot of these things become a lifestyle. So when you buy one of the things, you really get into you know, making different things, making recipes. Some people use this for every single meal. So if you're ready for a cooking adventure, this might be a great way to do that, right? You have your um, hub here to guide you along the way. Um, I think it's amazing. So if you are ready for a culinary adventure, you want to take yourself out of your comfort zone and you want to dive into a machine like this that can really get you going, um, I think it's really, really fun. So I'll put links down in the description to this. I just want to thank Cooking Pal for sending the Malto. It's been amazing trying this out. We are going to do some more recipes. We're going to do a manual recipe, not just a guided. So stay tuned for that. Um, I think Eric's already eaten that entire plate. Refill, Barkey. <laughs> okay, order's up.